We're going to be making coil pots inspired by the pots of Native Americans, in particular those of the Pueblo tribes of the southwestern United States. Today I've gathered a few pieces here as examples to show you guys. Some of these are pretty old uh, Native American pots. The first piece I'd like to show you is this one. This one's actually not from North America. This is a South American piece. This is from Peru. It's a Chima Inca piece. Uh, it dates from around 1000 AD to perhaps as, early, as recent as 1500 AD. This is a pre-Columbian piece, which means that it was, uh, it was created before Columbus set foot on this continent. And it is a jaguar face. You can see the jaguar motif on the top there. Um, this is a whistling jug or a whistling vessel. And here's how it works. So it's actually designed to whistle. We don't know, we don't know what the original intent was, if this was a ceremonial piece or if it was uh, something that was just a play piece, something like that. Um, but it's believed that perhaps you could pour water in one section and then by tipping it back and forth you can uh, get it to whistle uh, with the water inside of it. Um, it's not exactly known, you know, why, how these things were used originally, but um, archaeologists have found numerous of these um, throughout the northern Peruvian area. The next one I'd like to show you is, is this one over here. Um, this one is North American. This one came from, uh, actually, Bozeman, Montana is where I purchased it at a pawn shop. Um, I'm not exactly sure of its uh, exact origin, where it came from, but uh, it may be th from the Flathead culture. It is probably pre-Columbian, um, dating it back, you know, at least around 500 years or so. These three pieces are from the Pueblo culture. These three are actually Hopi, and we're not sure on the exact date of these either. These pieces here are probably at least 150 years old and perhaps as old as uh, 500 or so. Uh, these are what we call polychrome design. Um, these are uh, essentially uh, painted, the poly meaning uh, many and chrome meaning color. There's many colors on here. We see the darker red, um, the lighter orange color, and the black. Um, this one has a nice interesting polychrome design as well. Uh, you can see uh, at least three different colors of clay here, or three, three different colors of polychrome. And this one as well, what we call a polychrome design. It has a, a dark red uh, sort of a color out here, and then it's accentuated with the, uh, the darker areas. These pieces, um, at least 150 years old, uh, maybe as many as four or 500 on those three. These last two are contemporary, however. This is an example of contemporary Pueblo pottery. This one was created by Tomasa Mora of the Mata Ortiz Pueblo, which is in Chihuahua, Mexico. Uh, this one is uh, what I would call contemporary, meaning the artist is still alive and working today. Uh, Tomasa Mora's pieces, however, are worth a good bit of money. Um, this other one is also an example of uh, Pueblo pottery. This one happens to be Navajo, created at the Santa Clara Pueblo, and this one's contemporary as well. Um, three of these pieces are made out of black clay, and uh, the black clay you can find in volcanic regions. Uh, Peru, there's a lot of volcanic activity, and up into uh, the southeast or southwestern portion of the United States. And that's where the black clay comes. It comes from volcanic regions. Okay, you're going to need the rest of the clay from your clay kit. All right, that should be about a third of a pound that remains. And uh, you're going to need one of the sharpened tools that you made and some slip. Uh, also, prepare your workspace. I've got a nice piece of brown paper underneath here. Uh, it's great for rolling the clay on. Okay, so go ahead and take some of your clay out. What we're going to do first is to roll a whole bunch of coils 
and then just set them aside so that we can work with them. So I'm going to make about five or six coils to begin with. Okay, we're going to start our coil pots by making a spiral. Take one of your coils, and what you're going to want to do <clears throat> is score and slip, and then we're going to roll it up. So first thing I want to do is to score the clay. I'm going to scratch down one whole side. Scratch, 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 scratch. Coil pots are notorious for falling apart, so be sure that every joint, every place where it's connected, is slipped and scored. Then I'm going to take a little bit of my slip and run it down the whole side of that thing. And then we're going to make it into a spiral. Start on one end and just sort of fold it or bend it over. If it starts to crack on the outside edge, you can take a little bit of moisture, some slip or some water, and just rub over the cracked spots. But you want to keep on rolling and rolling and rolling it's going to start to look sort of like a snail okay see how that is and then i'm going to want to keep on rolling i'm using one hand to guide it with my right hand is sort of guiding it making it stay on track so to speak and then my left hand is rolling it along okay and i'm sort of pinching and guiding with my right hand kind of you know making it stick together and I've got to the end, I'm going to stop where there's a little bit so that I can attach the next piece. And I'm going to score and slip it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and attach the next piece. Again, you want to score and slip everything. So I'm scratching up the end. Scratch up the end. Put a little bit of slip on it. and weld those pieces together. I want to continue what I was doing, so I'm going to score down one side. And it looks like my bottom, my base, is probably about as big as I want it to be. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do next is to bring this up onto the, the rim of the, of the spiral that I've created. So here's a diagram of what's going to happen. If I place the coils just outside of the one that's beneath it, then the wall will go outward. If I place the, the coils just inside of the one that's beneath it, then the wall is going to go inward. We can control the profile of the pot by where we place the coils. If I wanted to make a cylinder, I would place the coils directly on top of the one that's beneath it in order to go straight up. So what I'm going to try to do is to go outward and then inward, um, much like a bowl at first. And I'm going to go until I run out of coils, until I run out of clay, because that's what we're doing. We're trying to use the rest of the clay. So I'm going to go up onto the rim. I'm going to score this area, because that's where it's going to be landing. So same thing, I'm going to want to attach to the end of that. 
score and slip all your seams, all your connections, score and slip. Before I begin to go too much further, I'm going to want to smooth out the clay. So you can use the rounded end of your wood tool and simply wipe across all those coils. We're going to try to blend the coils together so that it doesn't look like there's coils. It's going to look in the end almost like a pinch pot or maybe like something that was thrown on a wheel. We're going to smooth the outside of the pot as well. And we're doing this now because it's really hard to smooth the inside once the, um, you know, once it gets taller. So you want to smooth it off while it's short and then smooth it off again as it gets taller. So we're going to keep smoothing as we go. I'm going to smooth the outside of it as well. And if you want to leave the bottom as coils, go ahead and do that, because that way we can see that it was made from coils. Um, sometimes it's good to leave the, the mark of the maker there somehow, so you can sort of see how it was created. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and connect the next piece onto the end and then just keep on going. Now I'm trying to make it go out and then come in. Um, I've got a little bit of clay left. We'll see how far I get. That's what we're doing. We're trying to use up the rest of the clay. So as far as you go is as far as you go. And, um, you know, you may have a little bowl like this. Um, you may end up going a little bit further. Um, but we want to try to use up all that clay. That's the big thing here. Okay, I think I've gone around long enough going outward. I'm going to start bringing it up and inward a little bit so that I can have a profile that was similar to the one that I'm trying to get, something like this. So I've gone up, now I'm going to start going in. I mean, I went outward, now I'm going to start going inward with it. So I'm going to start scratching on slightly on the inward edge now. Now this is going to be my last coil, so I'm going to taper the end of it so that when it comes to the end, it doesn't end abruptly.
And then that tapered end, you can sort of just blend it down into the pot. Now we want to smooth this thing out. You're going to blend all those coils together. A couple of different techniques that you can use. Once you've um, once you've sort of gone through and scraped it, you know, sort of blending it with the tool, you can also do what's called paddling. So I'm going to. Um, blend this one in a little bit more and then we're going to paddle it to get it to um, you know come down to a nicer shape in the end And you're going to want to try to smooth out the inside as well. So you can get up inside there. Just make sure that you have a good pressure against the other side of it so you don't go popping through your inside of your vessel. You can also do what's called paddling the clay. And you're going to need another one of the sticks, or you can use the same one. Um, but you're going to basically lightly paddle it with the stick. And what this ends up doing is it really sort of takes out some of those lines. I'm very, very lightly, uh, you know, tapping it on here nice and flat. You can actually get it to be very close to perfect by doing a lot of paddling. Okay, so I still have some lines. I can easily go over those with my fingers and they start to disappear pretty, pretty well. So um, what I would suggest, <clears throat> the bottom, if you did not smooth it off, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. But you might want to have a slightly larger area to put your initials and period numbers. So what you might want to do is just smooth off a little bit of the bottom. If you didn't smooth the whole thing off, just smooth off a little bit. So that you have enough space to put your initials and period number. And if you wanted to foot this vessel, you can do that too. So you can take the corner of your heel of your palm and just tap in ever so lightly. And that indents the bottom. Okay, so now the bottom is indented a little bit. You can go over with your finger if you want to. And you can see how it does push up a little bit on the inside. That's fine. But that gives it a little bit of a foot. Right in there. And I have enough space where I smoothed it out here to put my initials and period number. And you know what? I'm not going to smooth out the whole bottom because I kind of like the idea that you can see that it's a coil pot. If we smooth it out everywhere, then you lose that. You know, and by keeping it on the bottom, you don't see it when it's upright, but it's there. You know, so anybody who knows clay would pick it up and be able to look at it and be able to tell that you made it out of a coil. So initials and period number.